You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. All right, let's talk a little Business Week economics now because it's Thursday and now we have gotten, uh, unfortunately, all too used to yes. or all too accustomed to, maybe I should say, uh, seeing jaw-dropping numbers every single Thursday when it comes to jobless claims. Today was no exception. Let's understand that in the broader context of the economy, what the Fed has been saying, and much more with Milton Ezradi. He is the chief economist for Vested. Joining us on the phone from Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. Milton, really nice to have you here with Carolyn and myself. Pleasure to be on. So let's start with the news of the day, which is those jobless claims. Uh, surprising to many that it remains at that high level. What did you read into it, especially as you got into the details? Well, mostly what I got out of the, the numbers were that some of the optimism that was implicit in the jobs report earlier this month, in the retail sales overstated the rebound in the economy. There are still a lot of people losing their job. One and a half million applied for unemployment insurance. That says to me that uh, Jay Powell, when he testified and said this is going to be a little longer, a little harder than you think, was correct. Well, you know, Milton, one of the things I was excited about having you on is that you have been in the world of finance and economics for, I don't know, 40 years. You've seen a lot of cycles um, and a lot of different crises. So this is safe to say, unlike any other, right? Because there's a logical part of us that understands with the economy shutting down, the impact it's going to have on activity, on the labor market, and so on. Um, I'm just curious how you see it, though, coming up on the other side. I think there was hopeful expectations. It was V, and we'd bounce back real quickly, but it's not that easy, and especially we have so many guests that come on and say, listen, we're still in a health crisis, and we still have a lot of problems. Well, there's the uncertainty about what's going to happen with the virus, and I'm not equipped to do that, uh, to talk about how the virus will go. But I think the issue here, and it's one thing that Powell tried to explain in his testimony before Congress and his press conference after the uh, FOMC meetings, is that there was a lot of damage done. It, it was fine to say we're going to shut down and everyone gets pent up demand, everyone wants to get out. But a lot of businesses closed, a lot of people were laid off. Yes, these people will be called back, those people who had the capital or the loans to bridge the gap. But there has been a real rise in bankruptcies. Those firms are never coming back. And I think that that is going to make this a lot longer. So we may see a bounce here, uh, the V that everyone's talking about. But then we're going to deal with the legacy of these bankruptcies, the legacy of uh, downsizing that did occur, more permanent downsizing, which is bridging uh, the uh, the lockdowns. And it'll the economy will slow after a, uh, a happy-looking V. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, and I was telling Carol a little bit about a conversation I had uh, just while I was late to the show. I was catching up with Henry Kravis over at KKR, and he was talking about the CEOs that he's talking to to a person are basically saying, my workforce is going to be smaller on the other side of this. And even if it's not every CEO, if it's a lot of CEOs who are saying that, that has a profound effect on the labor force going forward and ultimately the broader economy. It does. And we had wonderful employment numbers before the shutdowns and the lockdowns. I'm not saying we should have avoided them. That's a separate issue. But we're not getting back to that for a long time. And I stress the bankruptcies because the people who suffered most, Jay Powell made a, a point to this too, the people who suffered most in, in, in this, these lockdowns were the undercapitalized small businesses, particularly in the less advantaged uh, sectors of this economy, and they're gone. They're, they've gone bankrupt. They're, they're never coming back. So what does it look like then on the other side? Um, we've had you know, various economists and even our Bloomberg economics team, Milton, come on and talk to us and say, you know, it's going to be several years before we get back to where we were pre-COVID-19. Well, I think it'll be a long time, and I think several years is probably a good estimate. Mm -hmm. What I think is going to be deceptive here is that we're going to have this bounce. There's a lot of people who spent less money who had incomes because they could work from home or they were essential workers and did not have an opportunity to spend money. So you'll have 
this bounce in the economy. They want to get out. They want to have a restaurant meal. They want to see people in the bar. They want to buy clothes other than the pajamas they wore for a month and a half. Uh, they are, Just for the record, they Jason and I have been dressed every day doing our show in real clothes, not in our pajamas. I, will I think do... it's partially because we have to look at each other on video conference because who's to say what would happen if there were no evidence? However, our morning saying. planning call, mm, yeah. all bets off. Yeah, exactly. In some of the Zoom calls I've done, I've decided I'm the last clean-shaven man in America. Uh, I think that's right. I think you're. I think you're right about that. No, but it's but it's it's going to be different, and it's going to be really tough, and it's going to be lasting for for many individuals and many small businesses, as you said. It it is, and I think the minority groups in this country, not because of racism, just because of the undercapitalization in those sectors of the economy, are going to take the longest time coming back. We had best figures for Hispanic workers, best figures for uh, black workers before the shutdowns. It'll be a long haul for them. It'll be a long haul for everybody. We will have this bounce because people do want to get out, but that will fade um, by the fourth quarter. Right, because when we have a really tight labor market, that's when the fringes of the labor force, right, really start to benefit. And they did. We had a very tight labor market, and they they were benefiting. But now it's going to be a long road back, especially for them. Well, and as as you're alluding to, Milton, I think, you know, there are some structural issues. We talked about them with the CEO of Lindustry yesterday that relate to a lot of Mm minority-owned businesses where if they – they may not even be able to survive to to the other side, and and there are a lot of implications for that as well. Uh, Milton Ezradi, thank you so much. Really nice to catch up with you. Chief Economist for Vested. Joining us on the phone from Pennsylvania, Carol. Do you think Ari and Paula have like feety pajamas? I don't think so. Ari's in the office. Oh, that's right. So he's been dressed when he's doing yeah. our morning call. Paul? Paul, yeah. yeah. Paul, yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Could, could be a bunny twist. slippers, maybe. Little, little bunny slippers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ari. We yeah, appreciate Ari that you Ari just confirmed are. that he is in, he is dressed in our control room, so that's good to know. <laughs> no, I think there's an NC, no comment from Paul Oh, Brandon. Paul Brandon's in shorts. Oh, he is? Yeah, that, that checks out. That checks out. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Absolutely.